Kevin McCullough, so glad to have you with us. Um, AFA Today, the uh, studios here in New York. I'm back from my uh, weekend with the uh, family leadership group in uh, Iowa and had a great time. Concerned Women for America was there. Uh, there are a lot of people that can that uh, very much care about the direction of where our nation is headed, uh, and they showed up and they spoke up and they spoke out, and we'll have some more highlights of that uh, before we're done. But I want to get uh, to my next guest because Dr. Alveda King is the niece of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and she uh, uh, is a well-known spokesperson now on the issue of uh, pro-life matters, uh, but also as it pertains to relating Christianity to everyday life in this world around us. And uh, Dr. King uh, joined us just before we went on the air today. And Dr. Alveda King, it's always good to have you here with Kevin McCullough. With Kevin McCullough, thank you for being here. Kevin, I'm so glad to join you and your listeners. Hello, everyone. <laughs> let me let me ask you. Uh, this this appeared in the Washington Post, and in this weekend, um, Donnie McClurkin, who's a beloved pastor and gospel artist here in the New York area, uh, has sung for many different uh, presidents and different events, and he's he's been kind of bipartisan in terms of the people that have uh, enjoyed his ministry in the past. He was scheduled to be at this. DC-based uh, uh, government-sponsored concert called the, the the Reflections on Peace from Gandhi to Martin Luther King, and um, he didn't perform on Saturday night. And the mayor's office says that he withdrew, but Pastor McClurkin is saying uh, he was asked not to attend, and they're linking it all to his basic explanation. And Dr. King, this kind of blows my mind a little bit, but they're linking it all to his explanation that at one point in time. He had homosexual desires and activities in his life, and he no longer practices those. And because he no longer practices those, he was asked not to sing at this Martin Luther King Jr. event this weekend. Your, your reaction to this news as it's coming out this week? Well, I want to share a scripture. I wrote about this at Priest for Life last, uh, last week on my website, and also I wrote on Newsmax. And uh, about this, so you can find me on Newsmax Insiders or on my blog at Priest for Life. We will link all but of that. We'll, a, we'll link all of that to the Facebook page today, Dr. King, so people find it without any problem. Now, people wonder why I'm going to answer this by going to the Bible, but you know, my uncle was a preacher, my daddy, my granddaddy. I'm a preacher. Matthew chapter 19, and I'm reading out of the complete Jewish Bible, 19 verse 11. Jesus said to them, "Not everyone grasps." this teaching only those for whom it is meant. So there are different reasons why men do not marry. Some because they were born without the desire, some because they have been castrated, and some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. So we can understand that somebody can be born without a natural sexual desire for the opposite sex. Somebody can be castrated and along with that, in other translations, molested or forced into homosexual activity. And then some say, well, I'd rather serve God than to have sex at all. Mm. And so Donnie fell in that second category. He was not castrated surgically, but his uh, desires for sex when he was molested, and according to his own testimony, caused him to be sexually uh, confused. And so he prayed and he allowed God to redirect his life. And, but even for those who were born without a natural desire for procreation and marriage to the opposite sex, you know, you could either say, well, I, you know, it's not right to say God made me like this, because really all that, back all the way in the book of Genesis, a lot of things happen. That's why people have high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, heart trouble, sexual perversion, all of that. But there is a way out of that, and Donnie calls it deliverance. He said he was delivered from the sin of homosexuality. That's his testimony. And so what happened, someone, someone from the homosexual community came and went to the mayor and said, well, we are disturbed about this. This is not the beloved community uh, of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. But what Donnie does is very loving. He says, I once was blind, but now I see. The same thing with Amazing Grace in the time of slavery. The slave master wrote the song, Amazing Grace. I once was blind, but now I see. So people can have a transformational experience like Donnie McClurkin had, and for him to be punished, and for him to be punished, and then for the mayor's office to just say, oh, he just just withdrew. In other words, we don't know why he withdrew. He just didn't come. No, Mr. Mayor, you all asked him not to come. Yeah. So why not be honest about that? 
Yeah, and that's what puzzles me. We're speaking with Dr. Alveda King, who is, of course, the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and a very powerful voice in her own right for the uh, freedom and the liberation of those that I feel like are most oppressed in our current day and age, and that is the lives of the unborn. But she's also uh, a fearless Bible believer, and so she, she enters life with great confidence in what the truth of Scripture says. And we're discussing this story that first appeared in the Washington Post. It's on Fox News today, but it has to do with uh, the fact that the gospel singer Donnie McClurkin, who happens to be a pastor here in the New York area, uh, and uh, speaks, uh, you know, the truth of God to the people that he ministers to regularly, simply made the decision uh, that uh, he wasn't going to act on certain inclinations, certain tendencies in his sexual uh, life a number of years ago, prayed to ask uh, God to help him with that, saw that help come through, and because he says God helped him overcome that, uh, the, the activists got angry about it and said, no, he can't come. Now, Dr. King, I'm concerned about this. Because I think this is about as innocent a way of debating the homosexual issue as one can find. You have a homosexual who no longer practices homosexuality, someone who identified as having homosexual tendencies who no longer practices it, yet the other side says the mere fact that he says that is so hateful he cannot even be allowed to sing a song in, in, uh, in reference to Dr. Martin Luther King. How, how, where is our nation headed if this is a, uh, a sign of things to come, what does this mean to you? Now, you caught me for this interview. I'm at home with a house full of grandbabies today, <laughs> believe it or not. So if you hear little voices in the background, you can know that I was fruitful and I did multiply. There you go. But, uh, <laughs> but honestly, if we can't have that two ways. We can't say that it is very loving for you to say it's okay for me to be homosexual and you to endorse that. But if you say, I, I'm not homosexual, I used to be, and I'm no longer homosexual, then how is that loving for the mayor, for that administration, for the event planners, to tell Donnie he cannot sing? Where's the love in that expression? And so I'm saying turnabout should be fair play, and it is not here. And that's what you are right to be concerned, because in the beloved community, there should be room for all discussion. Everyone should be able to express the glory of God that came into their own lives and what it did for them, and that should not be called a hateful expression. Dr. King, do you believe, uh, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I want you to have a chance to answer this question. Do you believe that this extends further than simply Donnie's um, decision to walk away from the homosexual lifestyle? Do you believe that this is actually maybe a certain degree of cultural resistance to Christianity that's driving this uh, this uh, conflict? Well, please don't misunderstand me if I say I want to take it even further and deeper than that, uh, outside of every religious term, including Christianity, what faith are you, what color are you, uh, what gender are you, but just in human truth, the human expression is resisting that mandate to be fruitful and multiply. Because two men cannot do that together in sexual expression. Two women cannot do that. And the truth, they're trying to hide the truth, uh, those who want to push that agenda, that you can really make another decision. Even if you were born with no natural desire for the opposite sex, mm. you can in prayer that people are beginning to say, I have many friends, and they, go, they have ministries. And they were practicing homosexuals, some who were born that way. As a matter of fact, the uh, godfather of my three older children, he's deceased now, Judge Larry Paul, and he was openly homosexual. And we would have these conversations, and he said he was born that way. And towards the end of his life, I mean, we were friends. And I did not hate him. He did not hate me. We talked about this. And my kids called him Uncle Larry. But I said, Larry, honestly, whatever you were born with, you can lose it here by being born again. And when we all get to heaven... That is a Christian term, and I'm, I am a Christian. I want to say that. When we all get to heaven, we won't carry any of this. Mm. And so that's the message that we're going to have to be allowed to share in love. And, I, you know, people say to me all the time, you're hateful, you're homophobic. I'm absolutely not. Never have been. The, the mother of my son, my youngest son, has a daughter with a practicing les lesbian. She lives with a lady. So, I mean, I don't hate homosexuals. Absolutely not. 
Dr. Alveda King is very uh, well known for her work on behalf of the uh, unborn with Priests for Life. Uh, she also has her own ministries, Alveda King Ministries, and we are grateful for her time today. Dr. King, I know you're very busy. Thanks for coming back by the Kevin McCullough Show. What's, what's one thing God has on your heart uh, right now that you're working on uh, at this stage of your ministry? At alvedakingministries.com, and you can find us there. We are advancing the beloved community. We are advancing the kingdom of God. I am a Christian evangelist, and I want us all to love one another, to be able in love to communicate truth, mm. and to examine the forgiveness of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. And so that we don't have to abort our babies and we don't have to have these battles like we're talking about Donnie today. Those are all the things that we can resolve in the love of God. Amen. Amen. Dr. Alveda King, and we're so grateful that she made some time for AFA today. Uh, and uh, Kevin McCullough uh, back with you now live in the studio. That discussion took place just before we went on the air, and uh, it, it was getting her reaction as the niece, as the uh, one of the uh, relatives of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to react to this concert that took place uh, this last weekend in which a Christian pastor, a Christian pastor who has overcome homosexuality in his own walk, in his own life, um, was uninvited to participate, to sing a song, um, especially in, in, in light of the fact that he is a gifted uh, gospel artist. Donnie McClurkin, I say that name today. There may be some of you that don't know who that is, but in gospel circle fans uh, circles, uh, that is that that name is a a uh, a list top shelf. It doesn't get better than uh, than Donnie McClurkin. So here's what I want to know: eight 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 five eight nine eight eight four zero. Your reaction to the fact that uh, these uh, lawmakers in in Washington D.C. First of all, the mayor we believe is not telling the truth. We believe that he is in fact uh, lying to the public that the Arts and Humanities Commission is lying to the public, uh, that uh, they're saying that uh, Mr. McClurkin decided on his own not to show up. In reality, he was, the, he was kind of the, the uh, anchor of the uh, lineup that they were using to promote uh, this concert, this uh, 50th commemoration of the Civil Rights uh, March on Washington and the, uh, and, the, and the work of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. They had uh, emissaries from India because they said from Gandhi to King, that was the name of the event. Um, but friends, what, is, what does this demonstrate to you in terms of the uh, power of the lobby of activists that are advocating for an, an increased uh, presence and support for uh, those that practice homosexual activities versus those that, that practice faith? See, to me, what this says is, is that when that uh, activist said last week that uh, sexual liberty— will come into conflict with religious liberty, and when that happens, the courts must be obliged to uh, put forward sexual liberty. This is a perfect example of that. Someone who is, uh, who, who has, and, and it has nothing to do with the legacy of Dr. King. Dr. King never embraced homosexuality as a way of public life. He never would have, uh, he, he, he never would have accepted it. He never would have said this is, this is uh, okay for, for, for Bible-believing Christians to, uh, to uh, go along with. Um, and, and so you, you, have this, you have this mayor, the Arts and Humanities Commission, uh, they promoted it on the name, presence, and image of Donnie McClurkin. They, they were expecting tens of thousands of people to show up. And the night before the concert, they call him and they uninvite him, according to what Pastor McClurkin is saying. 888-589-8840, 888 I want to know your thoughts on this, uh, and we have time for some of these before we go to our next break, so let's talk to Scott in Oklahoma. Scott, you're up next on, a on uh, AFA Today here on AFR Talk. Hi. Scott, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Kevin. Go right ahead. Uh, just wanted to thank Dr. King for her comments. Um, I think it was really inspiring and, and gave us the true nature of uh, – uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's vision yeah. about tolerance. Um, as far as, as this goes, um, it's, I'm really saddened that this beautiful testimony of God's love and forgiveness and, and redemption uh, has been stifled by, uh, you know, the agendas of others. Um, it, it just goes to show how the 
the advocates have really gained teeth uh, in this, and, and that anybody who experiences God's love has been stifled. It's just really sad to me. Yeah, and, and I need to make it very clear. When I said that Donnie McClurkin is a bipartisan guy, he doesn't endorse presidential candidates, and it's true. He sang for President Bush, and he sang for President Obama. He, he, he went both ways on the he, As a pastor, he doesn't see himself as only a Democrat or only a Republican. He, he, he believes that his call is to minister to people in the spiritual realm. And so uh, he doesn't let uh, that kind of stuff move you to or, or from ministering to somebody. So if, if a Republican calls him and says, will you pray for me? He's going to pray for him. The same thing for a Democrat. But here you have activists that go to the mayor, that go to the uh, Arts and Humanities Commission and say, if you let this man speak, if you let this man appear, uh, we're, we're, we're going to have the, the gay activists uh, 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 torment you, protest. Uh, they're they're going to call you out, Mayor Gray. And he surrendered to that pressure and uninvited a man who was going there in the spirit of Dr. King, who he was asked to honor in being there. Your thoughts on this as we continue. It's AFA Today. Kevin McCullough, glad you're with us on AFR Talk. Don't go away. <laughs> 